Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are looking at and trying out for ourselves seven money saving guinea pig hacks. Because let's be honest, our lovable little furry potatoes can cost us an absolute bomb. And I was amazed to see just how much could be saved each year by following some of these hacks. So let's get started with hack number one and I've got to go outside for it. There's no getting away from it, hay is the most important part of our piggies' diets. But sometimes I really wonder to myself, why is it so expensive when there's so much grass everywhere? That's a lot of grass. So much grass. We normally buy this bag of 6kg meadow hay, which costs me £16 a bag. On top of that, I use Timothy hay ordered online at £31.90, including delivery for 10 kilos. And we get through a lot, mainly because I like to use it in the pig's litter tray, which they love. So I did some maths, which is impressive for me. <laughs> and at eight bags and eight boxes each per year, I'm spending at least £390 a year on hay. The alternative? Well, right now I'm headed to a farm to collect a bale of hay. There is a lot of hay in there. It's big. <laughs> so this is about 20 kilos. And I'll tell you what, it smells so nice. It feels nice and dust free and lovely and fresh. So I'm looking forward to trying this, but yeah, it's huge. This was a premium bale from a local farm, which cost me £8.50 for 20 kilos, the equivalent of £45 worth of my normal store-bought meadow hay, but this should easily last me four to five months instead of six weeks. And paired with using slightly less Timothy hay, I think I can save myself a massive £240 a year. Let's give this hay a go. Oh, we want to try that, don't we? I think Callie's going to jump in. You're going to jump in? Yep, <laughs> we're in. And Nacho's in too. Phoebe. Oh, Phoebe's in. Phoebe. Oh, bless you, darling. I didn't think you were going to jump in. It must be good stuff. They wouldn't be jumping in for nothing. Okay, next up is something that has the potential to be a big saving and it is something that I do already but I wanted to consider the alternative here. And it feels weird doing this but we are switching to paper-based bedding and I'm gonna need a lot. This cost £14 for one bag and I'm using it all in the cage plus some newspaper because I'm not really sure what to put underneath it. Piggies, what's happening? I hope there's going to be enough, actually. It definitely does feel very strange and I have no idea what the piggies are going to think of it. What's this? What is that? Is that strange? Here goes Nacho Bum and Phoebe. <laughs> they leave little footprints in it. It's so adorable. What's that? Is that strange? No, we're not used to that, are we? Kelly's just eating it, great. I think they're definitely a bit happier with all of their stuff in here, but it is still very, very weird. And generously assuming I would change this every two weeks, but I suspect it would need more, this would cost me a huge £364 for the whole year. So this is where fleece comes in, and as you probably already know or might have been told, fleece makes a great reusable bedding for guinea pigs. And running the numbers, over the last 12 months fleece has cost me just £35 in a combination of detergent and running my washing machine. I know what you're thinking, isn't there a big big upfront cost with those expensive waterproof liners and special absorbent materials. The truth is though, you don't need these, especially in the beginning. You can give fleece a try by using a cheap fleece throw tucked around under some old towels on the bottom of your cage. 
And sure, you might choose to make or buy yourself some liners eventually, but by that point, you could have already saved hundreds. I'll pop my tutorial on making DIY fleece liners in the description below. You can make a large fleece liner using normal and waterproof mattress protectors for a cage the size of mine from as little as £20. Next up, well, it's echoey in here. <laughs> there is potential money to be saved with any new or upgraded cage that you might get for your piggies. There's a few options here and none of them, none of them involve buying a cage from a pet store, which usually turn out to be a huge waste of money. Option one is to see my latest video on the top eight guinea pig cages. And if you see a cage you like, shop around. Often extendable cages like the Midwest are heavily discounted to under 50 pounds or $50. And if you're looking for a CNC cage specifically, consider going DIY. There are several companies out there these days who sell the grids, connectors, and plastic bases all made to measure nicely, but they do put a chunky markup on all of this. As an example, and enter the cage behind me, I researched what you'd need to make a 2x4 CNC cage but with a stand. And for grids and 4mm thick Corex plastic for the base, it comes to around £66. This versus buying a ready-made 2x4 with a stand for £134. So that's a massive £68 difference. And I recently did a tutorial on how to make your own DIY CNC cages. And from experience, it really really isn't that hard. And going DIY, it means you can make design choices to suit you and your home. And it means you have the knowledge and skills to make repairs and even renew or expand your cage in the future, which can mean more big cost savings over buying an entirely new one every time. The fleece is back and we're moving on to hack number four. So I worked out that the guinea pigs get through about five pounds worth of supermarket veggies per week, which is 230 pounds over the course of a year. Even if I could do something to half this, then it would be a decent 117 pounds saved. But don't worry piggies, I'm not talking about cutting back portions. Kitchens, cafes, local farm shops and markets are full of unwanted produce and not mouldy or gone off stuff either that we wouldn't want to give our piggies. A lot of it might just be leftover parts that we humans don't eat, like corn husks, broccoli stalks, cauliflower leaves, which our piggies love very much. And there might be other stuff that's just surplus and unlikely to get sold or used. So why not ask? I don't think it's been cheeky and you might find that people appreciate being able to offload what would be wasted anyway. Or they might accept a small contribution in exchange exchange for a large amount of veggies. Also, don't pass on mentioning to your friends and neighbours that your piggies will happily eat up anything that would go to waste. Next up, I'm sure we're all aware that our guinea pigs are not that fussy when it comes to expensive cage accessories. If it's shaped like a tunnel, or even better, it's made of cardboard, they'll love it. So don't miss out on the opportunity to create some fun DIY accessories and toys for your pigs and give them an enrichment boost in the process. A good time for this might be when you feel one of those piggy spending sprees coming on. Or if you do need new stuff, you can find things on the cheap through sites like FreeCycle, pre-loved Gumtree or free ads on Facebook. And I've also seen it recommended to adapt cheap homeware products into cage accessories, like cute little dishes for food bowls and repurposing things like baskets, bread bins, and even step stools for Heidi's in the cage. And also if you're into sewing or maybe you have an old sewing machine that you could dig out, you can make your own piggy cozy supplies. You could use fabrics from charity shops or even make them out of old clothes. If you like this idea but you're stuck on where to start then I do have some sewing patterns for making your own piggy cozy items and I'll pop a link to my Etsy shop where you can download those down in the description below. Next up is a hack I've only recently started doing and already I've saved money. And I'm just like, why didn't I do this earlier? Like years earlier. The reason was because I was always in the habit of keeping my guinea pigs pellets topped up to the max. It's just what I always did. And I didn't give enough consideration to the health benefits or the cost implications of reducing pellets in our piggies diet. At one point, I even switched to a more expensive brand and bought 
them on subscription from Amazon. So I was buying one of these science selective bags every month, adding up to £92 a year. And I think that could easily be reduced to just three or four bags a year, saving a decent 65 to £70. Nowadays, I give my pigs one very small handful each per day, which is far closer to the recommended one tablespoon per pig per day. This helps reduce calcium in their diet, which can cause bladder stones, and it also encourages them to eat more hay. Expert guinea pig vets agree that hay should make up 80 to 90% of our piggies' diets, and pellets are often full of fillers like grains, wheat, and soy, which are not as healthy. So if you think you're overfeeding pellets, you know what to do. Next up is a cleaning hack that I have spoken about before, but there are variations on it. And it's for anyone who's still buying pre-made cleaning solutions in spray bottles to use on your piggy's cage. The spray bottles tend to be four to five pounds each, so you could easily be spending 20 pounds a year on just cleaning. That's why I would recommend either using a dilute vinegar and water solution, or if you want something stronger, but still non-toxic, you could get this F10 solution. And this has lasted me literally years. This year I did buy a new one, but it had lasted me easily a good three or four years. So at just £10 for this, and I will link it in my Amazon storefronts in the description below, we can find everything I recommend for guinea pigs. At just £10, this has been worth its weight in gold. That wraps up all of our money saving hacks for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys, and seeing me get out and about for a change as well. Well, if you did, let us know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And if you didn't see it, but you're interested in building your own DIY CNC cage, I will put this video up for you to watch next. DIY CNC cages really are super easy. So if you're considering buying a pre-made one, then maybe just think about having a go at building your own and save some money in the process. Okay guys, as always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.